Now, number one is that I focus on one year at a time. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is Biz Tips with Faye Shala, and I'm super, super, super excited to be sharing this video with you. Now, this channel is focused on all things business tips. That's small business owners, service-based business owners. If you are, if you fall in any of those categories, this is for you. We're gonna be talking about marketing, systems, processes, all of that to help you to thrive, all right? My name is Faye Shala. I'm the owner of Statuesque Events, which is a wedding planning and design company based in the DC area, but we do travel for events and I'm also a speaker and a business coach you know I do coach um, other small business owners and I have been invited to speak in many places including Fox 5 um, conferences etc and I'm super excited about bringing tips and content every week right here to YouTube for you all right for today I'm going to be showing you how I build a visual business plan for the year now I know that a lot of times business plan templates are these long word page documents, right? If you go on Google and you search for business plan um, template, you'll generally find word documents with lots of words, lots of paragraphs and things like that, which is great, um, especially if you're presenting to someone else or if you're seeking funding or if you are, you know, if you fall in those categories, those are great because you need to explain your business plan to someone else. But when you are just trying to keep yourself accountable, I think it's more important to have something visual to look at every single day so that you remind yourself of what your goals are for this year and that you help yourself to accomplish them. You know, if you're that person who's tried business plans or yearly plans in the past and you haven't really achieved your goals because you just kind of write it down and it goes into a drawer for the rest of the year, this video is for you, so definitely stay tuned. All right. Now let's go ahead and dive in. There are three reasons that I, or three ways that I really approach building my visual business plan every year. And I'm going to give you a spoiler. It's super simple, but it's very effective. Now, number one is that I focus on one year at a time. I know that this may be counterintuitive to some people. Some people may feel you gotta focus on the end goal, you know, 10, 15 years from now. There's nothing wrong with that and you should plan for that. But it's really important to get hyper-focused about what you're gonna do this year. Because sometimes you focus on what's gonna happen in five, 10 years from now. And because of that, you don't really do anything now to move yourself closer to that goal. So I really sit and focus on what I'm gonna do this year. And the second tip is that, is that I break it down by quarters. So this is what I'm trying to do in Q1, this is what I'm trying to do in Q2, this is what I'm trying to do in Q3, and this is what I'm trying to do in Q4. Now, a lot of times, it happens almost every year, most of my goals end up getting squished into Q1, and that helps me to take a step back and say, okay, Faye, are you really being realistic about doing everything in Q1? And that helps me to kind of pace myself, you know, and be mindful of what I'm trying to accomplish and how much I can really do in a quarter, right? And to space it out. Um, so number one is that I come up with goals according to the year. Number two is that I break them out by quarters, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And the third piece is that, you know, I make stretch goals. Now, a lot of times we have goals for the year that we know we're gonna hit. Um, there are goals for the year that maybe are already in progress. If you're like me, I generally start on the next year by Q4 of the previous year. So there's certain things that I already have in progress. There's certain things I know I'm already gonna hit, right? Like if you're in an industry like mine, where we're wedding planning or doing anything in the wedding industry, you generally already have at least half or more of your bookings as you're going into the new year because people tend to plan that far in advance. So there's certain goals you already know you're gonna hit. Maybe you already know you're gonna have 10 weddings this year because you have nine books, something like that. But I also come up with stretch goals that challenge me to try new things and push me into new areas, right? So I think that's important for growth. You know, you don't want every goal to be such an easy goal. You don't want it to be astronomical, like, okay, I'm gonna build the $7 million mansion this year. But you definitely want to have challenging goals that encourage you to think and that really push you so that you do eventually hit whatever goal that was that you put for yourself in 10 or 15, 20 years, right? All right, so enough talking about my three steps. Number one, breaking it down by year, then assigning tasks to quarters, and number three, never forgetting your stretch goals, all right? So now enough of that, and I'm gonna show you how exactly I map all of this out on paper in a visual way for myself, all right?
Okay guys, so this is the exciting part. I'm super excited about showing you. Um, all right, I'm gonna introduce you to my tools. I have three tools. First, sticky notes. I love sticky notes. And peak the brand, all right? I do have branded sticky notes, which I give to clients sometimes that say stack trust events on here, all right? So I first like to write all of my goals on a sticky note before I put it, put it up, uh, just so I can get it right. Second, I have markers, all right? I wanna make sure you guys can see what I'm writing. I like to make sure I can see what my goals are when I you know, get up, when I first look at it, I wanna be able to see it and have everything bold. So I put some markers instead of a pen to write out my goals. And last but not least, this is the final board that everything's gonna go on. So literally, I just use a lot of raw tools to pull everything together and I'm excited about showing you how I do that, all right? So for the first step, what I do is I break my board down into quarters, meaning Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And again, the reason that is really important is because I wanna make sure that you know I'm pacing myself and that I have a reasonable amount of work to do all year long, all right? So, I'm gonna go straight down. Don't judge my drawing skills, by the way. All right, so now I've got four quarters, right? So this is Q1, which of course is January to March. Q2, which is April to June. Q3, which is July to September. And then Q4, which is October to December, all right? So all of these sticky notes are gonna end up in one of these quarters. Now, um, the next thing I do is think about what my goals are for the year. So let's think. One big goal that I have for this year is what I'm doing right now is focusing more on this YouTube channel, right? One of the goals, and to be really specific about that goal, you know, I want to give more content. I love, you know, whenever I speak at an event, people say, how can I hear more from you? How can I be coached by you? Um, how can I get more of your tips? I want to be able to point people here. And I also want other people to discover and, and have these tips at their disposal as well, right? So I definitely want to build, start my YouTube channel, um, ramping it up, which I'm already doing now in Q1, right? But on that note, by the end of the year, God willing, and with you guys' help, I have another goal for YouTube, and I'd like to build up my subscriber list, right? So I do have this crazy vision in my head. We'll see where it lands, but I would like to have at least 25,000 subscribers by the end of the year, right? So we'll see what happens, but sometimes you have to come up with those goals, right? So you can see YouTube, 25,000 subscribers, and I'm gonna put that in Q4. So starting in Q1, have my goal for Q4. Are you getting this? So next up, um, another goal that I have for this year is definitely ramping up on Pinterest, you know, focusing more on Pinterest for the wedding planning side of my business, you know, um, putting my work out there for people to see. And by the way, next week I'm gonna be teaching you the different Pinterest tactics uh, that I've used to really grow my Pinterest page. So make sure you subscribe and come back next week for that. But definitely Pinterest, you know, um, really just spending more time on that, um, blogging and putting things up is definitely a goal that I have for Q1. Now, one thing I also wanted to mention is that this should be very as realistic as possible. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a wedding planner. So generally in Q2 and Q3, my life gets a little hectic because I'm, you know, in the final stages of wedding work and working, you know, many weekends on weddings, you know, lots of changes and things are happening. So generally my goals tend to be a little heavier in Q1 and Q4 because that's just realistic uh, according to how my life is. You know, I have personal goals as well to read lots of books. Last year I read 12 and a half books. This year I'm trying to push it up to 15. So the majority of those books will be read in Q1 and Q4. Uh, I'll read a couple in these, in these uh, quarters as well, but the majority of them will be in Q1 and Q4 before life gets really hectic. Does that make sense? That's why this is important because it helps you to be realistic about how you're planning out your goals. Now, another goal that I have, which is more of a stretch goal, is definitely to get a little bit more um, into television and you know media, right? So of course our, our business has been featured in a number of magazines. I have a couple of them on my desk. You know, they're not Mungaluchi Bride, etc. And I love that. Um, and we have had a segment before on Fox 5 DC. I've done those things before, but I'd like to get more into being a regular contributor to different news outlets. So that's more of a stretch goal because that requires a lot of work, um, inside knowledge, etc. But it's one that I think I can reach. So I'm making that a goal for this year as well. All right. right, so increase media, print, and TV, right? So that's going up on the vision board. I'm 
gonna make that a goal for Q2, because I think it's gonna require a little bit of planning. So Q2 and hopefully have it manifest before the end of the year. So I'm hoping that you guys are getting the picture here of how you know this is all coming out. Um, another goal that I have this year is continued learning and networking. So I definitely want to go to a couple of conferences this year. One that I definitely want to attend is Women Evolve. Um, of course, my businesses primarily are all about uplifting women, um, you know, making us, you know, just uplifting women who are possibly also women of faith, but really just women who are dynamic, who have awesome businesses, who have big plans for their lives. And I really want to just go to Women Evolve. I think it's an awesome conference put on by Sarah Jakes Roberts, and I want to meet other women. I want to um, network. I just want to be in the building. And so that's definitely a goal that I have um, as well for Q3. And in Q4, I would like to also attend another conference, you know, more of a business conference, right? So likely a wedding industry conference. Because learning is always on my agenda. Uh, and not just learning, of course, networking, but learning is really critical, right? So as you can see, this is filling up pretty fast as far as my goals. Um, I'll go ahead and put, you know, one of my usual goals, which is, you know, 10 weddings this year. We're already pretty much there. So I'll put 10 weddings by Q3, because that's generally when our weddings end, usually by the end of September, maybe early October. And you can kind of see my goals. Now these, the, the goal also isn't to have a million goals that just get you all stressed out. These are like high level goals that are visual. And as you can see, once you walk into the room, you can see where I'm supposed to land. As of right now, we're about halfway through Q1. So of course, everything on this list here should be already in progress or, you know, I'm putting pressure on myself to, to work on those things. And that's the goal for this. So this is how I keep myself accountable every year to my goals, the goals that I have for my business, the goals that I have really for my life. Um, I have an extended one that has my personal goals on it as well. And this is what I think everyone can do. It literally takes five or 10 minutes a day uh, really to map this out, think about what your stretch goals are for the year and yeah, all right. So as you can see, my goals kind of run the gamut of a lot of different things, but it's important to put it out there so that you can plan ahead for these stretch goals that you have, you know, 25,000 YouTubes, the going to wedding industry conferences, the media, all those things generally take planning, right? So that's just like a really quick look on how I come up with my goals for the year and how I map them out so it's easy for me to see. I have been transparent and shown you guys a lot of my goals for the year, so please support me. Tell other people about me. Make sure you follow along. And of course, Pinterest is a big one for Q1, so that's what next week's video is going to be all about. All right, so make sure you come back next week, watch the video where I uncover how far I've gotten with my Pinterest and how I got there. I'm going to show you analytics, metrics, and all of that, and I can't wait to have you back. So. Um, um, there are a lot of more resources in the description that you can click you know, to learn more about me, to stay plugged in. Um, if there's anything else that you want to learn, please let me know in the comments because I will definitely make a video about it. All right. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next week.